Give us a little bit of a vision. What is the plan for European space exploration in 2020? Good morning, first of all, and uh, Happy New Year still. Yes, uh, we are planning a lot of things in this uh, year. We are starting uh, this week with another launch from uh, French Guiana. It's Connect. It's a public-private partnership with industry for a new type of uh, satellite navigation. Uh, and then we will have uh, already in February the next launch, which will be um, called Solar Orbiter to investigate the sun. You know that the sun is very important for us, not only for daylight, uh, but also concerning solar flares, solar storms, which can really have an impact on our electric system, our internet connections. And then we will have also this year the launch of Sentinel-6, which is together with the European Union part of our fleet of Earth observation satellites. So already this year, there's a lot of uh, different activities. We will have uh, a maiden flight of Ion-6 and uh, Vega-C and also return to flight of Vega. So this, it's full. This uh, year is full of activities, but at the same time, we are planning for the future. Uh, part of the future is, of course, space tourism. And there are lots of private companies vying for a space there. We've got Elon Musk, Virgin. Is there a risk that EU might be being left a little bit behind by not venturing into that sphere? I think this is very normal that we are not entering into this sphere because we are a public organisation. We should not disturb the commercial market. It's the other way around, we are supporting the commercial market to develop new fields. So I see the role of the public entities in the future quite different than in the past. Still, we are an agency, but we are doing more and more partnership with industry. We are sometimes just a customer of industry. And of course, we are a broker. Broker means that we are putting different actors together. And space tourism, for sure, will come not only in lowest orbit, but also moon. So you can rule out space tourism from the ESA? It's not, our t it's not our task. Our member states are not asking us to do space tourism. We are always doing what our uh, member states are saying. But we have, of course, the technology they are using. One thing that's been a real help and an asset to journalists reporting on things like the Australia wildfires has been the satellite images from some of your satellites up in orbit. Where do you see the ESA in terms of our constant monitoring of the changing environments? For me, this is uh, more than just monitoring. You see, if you look to climate change or other challenges, uh, the most important thing is at the beginning to discover that there is an effect. So in case of uh, climate change, it was discovered by exploration um, on Venus. The planet Venus had a much stronger climate change than we have so far. So the discovery is step number one. Step number two is monitoring. You are totally right. We can only monitor all these climate changes from space. More than 50% of the climate variables can be observed only from space. Of course, we can measure melting of glaciers. We can measure the temperature of the sea and so on and so on. The next step is then raising awareness. We have to get out of these data we get from space. We have to make information which is available for the public and for politicians. I call it raise awareness. And uh, this is step number three. And then the fourth step is to work against it, to mitigate or even protect uh, dangerous aspects. I was enjoying this morning looking at your website and particularly the frequently asked questions. So there's clearly desire for answer to this. One of the things you say you're seeking to find out is, of course, are we alone in the universe? So I have to ask you. So the, you can answer in a different way this uh, question. I was once asked at the same time the, with another administrator and we gave more or less the same answer, but the public reacted totally different. My opinion is the universe is so big, so we should not believe that we are the only ones in this huge universe. But there is another aspect. We will not have connections to them because, again, the universe is so big, so it takes a million or billion of years to get some uh, news from there to the other. And if you respond, it takes another million or billion of years. So therefore, I think uh, we will be still alone in, uh, in our environment. But I'm quite sure the probability says us that we are not alone in the universe. Thank you very much for your time. Jan Werner, Director General of the European Space Agency. Thank you.